Creative collaboration is a fantastic yet overlooked way to boost creativity by bouncing off one another's ideas, and it plays a huge role in creative industries. American anthropologist Anna Tsing defies collaboration as working across differences, which can then result in contamination. This means that by ideating with a team, creativity is in a way diversified, and the result can be so different than if you were working alone. To help me discuss creative collaboration and to also embark on a fact-based dreaming about the future of the art profession, I sat down with Wollongong artist Harry Phillips to discuss the role of collaboration in his field. I chose to interview Harry because I really enjoy his work. As someone who is a really good artist myself and who loves the idea of being able to create art as a job, I was keen to talk to someone who inspires me. Let's go. All right, thank you for having me, Harry. It's really cool to be in your creative space. It's beautiful. It's quite messy um, at the moment, I'm very sorry. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna start with some quick fire questions just so our audience can get to know you a bit better. Do I have to answer them quickly? Yes. Okay. Um, so what is your name and what do you do? My name is Harry Phillips and I do everything. I do a lot of things. <laughs> if we're specifically looking at things, it would be um, Painting, multimedia creation, and um, expressionism. So you're a creative professional? Oh yeah, big time. Yeah, big time. Oh, I like yeah. But I, like the word professional kind of freaks me out a little bit, but it's yeah. the, it's the bread it's the breadwinner, and it uh, it's what I enjoy and it's what I aim to do. So it's what I do at the moment. So I guess professional is the uh, correct title. Awesome. All right. What's your least favorite color? My least favorite color is lime green. Mm. What's your favourite song? My favourite song would be... Um, oh, that's a really good one. I'm probably going to say Black Dog by Led Zeppelin. Okay. Can you sing it for us? No, I'm not going to sing it for you. What type of interview is this? <laughs> <laughs> so, we're here in your space. Could you share with us some background on how your journey with art began and how you got here? Um, my journey started off in my first year uni, but if you think about it as a entire kind of as a big if you see it as a big tree you know the base may have stemmed or grown at in my first year of uni but like the roots have been there ever since i was a child because it was always doodling or colors or talking about just absolute rubbish which had now kind of is seen in my creative process so it first started off with me just sitting around uh, my first year uni didn't have a job and we would just we had this old like big fridge <clears throat> we had this big fridge on our balcony didn't work but it was just there after a while we bought some paint and then we just started painting it and you know next thing we went this is kind of cool let's get some canvas and then i was with my roommate at the time he kind of felt less interested in it and i kind of picked it up and kind of ran with it a bit and those canvases I then displayed them at a local uh, exhibition and then it kind of just picked up steam from there. Since then I was painting in my bedroom, I'd have to lay down a bed sheet every time I wanted to paint which started to be most days and it got a little bit annoying and then I had more and more exhibitions and started to sell more and more paintings and then next thing you know I teamed up with um, these lovely girls who are wedding designers and florists and creatives and collaborated with them to move into uh, this big shared collaborative creative powerhouse of a warehouse. Um, and you've got so much beautiful art in here. Um, I love, I'd love to zero in on a piece of yours and discuss your creative process kind of from start to finish. You know, I'm a self-taught artist. I don't necessarily have a method or a process of how to create something. It's just kind of a natural expression or an outlet of how I feel at that particular time. And because I'm self-taught and because I'm very critical, as most people are, of themselves or if what they'd expect to create something so beautiful that people would think that that's their best work, 
my art is very layered and that's because I start off with something that I'm thinking at the time and then over the course of days or weeks or months or hell I've even been working on things for years that you just go back to and paint over things and correct yourself and it starts off as this one idea but over a while of critical thinking and self-doubt it evolves and matures into something completely different so there'd be hidden messages in the base layer or there'd be colors representing certain feelings at certain times and then over the course of the process of painting it you know eventuates into something either completely different or the message is still very much there but in my opinion it just looks beautiful because that's how it's ended up so um, we've been tasked to discuss um, creative co collaboration in creative industries but how do you use collaboration in your day-to-day -day life as an artist the collaboration between this particular industry myself and other creatives can stem from anything with whether it be influence or um, well, you know, I'll, I'll give a good example of a creative that used to be here who was another painter, but we had two completely different styles and he would paint something for me and give it to me and then I would just, you know, mess it up in the best way possible or vice versa. I'd give him something and then he would just do something so crazy over the top of it, which, it, like, realistically, you couldn't just do that on your own. Being in the place where we are, you're always going to be doing your own thing because you have your own space, but the inspiration that surrounds you of people not necessarily doing your exact craft, so they may not be painters, they may be furniture designers to podcasters to jewelers to, you know, multimedia uh, editors upstairs. It's when it comes down to me wanting to fulfill just like this kind of creative dream that I have which may not always be painting there's always other people to bounce off and to inspire and influence from those people is the, the benefit of it um, commissions in my self self art art self is people uh, it's kind of like an ex external influence of um, what, what, what are we talking about? Collaboration, external influence of collaboration is the consumer says, hi, I want something that's like this and like this and like this and looks like some of your pieces. And that's collaboration with me and someone else because I have to try and fulfill their needs. And then it's not just me doing whatever I want to do. I'm teaming up with them and creating something for them. It goes from the consumer to the producer. So, yeah. Thanks for listening. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Uh, I've got a final question here. Um, so, my peers and I have been given a creative brief. We've been asked how you would respond to such a brief. Um, and it is that we are living on the verge of immense challenges and opportunities that will change the way we live. Engage the audience in a fact-based dreaming of their possible futures. Um, how I take that is a fact-based fact -based dreaming of my possible possibilities of a future, I hope. And if I'm saying that wrong, then, you know, correct me or don't correct me, but I'm going to engage in it regardless. So bring it on. Fact-based dreaming. <clears throat> so... You know, fact-based dreaming, whether it be... Oh, man, that's a, that's a real big... It's pretty loaded. It's a heavily loaded question. Like, I'm yeah. trying to compare it to something that maybe I've conjured up or alluded with in my own life, but realistically, like, if I have a... If I have dreams or aspirations or if I know there's, you know, dreams of what this could be like let's compare it to climate change and the dream of you know producing less you know carbon based CO2 fossil fuels yada 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 we can get into that if we want 
the dream would be to everyone to run on electric cars. And then next thing you know, we won't even, might not even need cars because everyone would just have these little electric roller skates that could just zoom everyone around and we don't even need cars. So like maybe that's the fact that dream that, you know, process of elimination, cut out the Nazis and bring in the baddies, if that makes sense. <laughs> Awesome. My conversation with Harry really highlighted how beneficial collaboration can really be for creativity, not only for artists, but in any university or work setting. Going forward with this project, I'm keen to bring my skills and my creativity to the table to combine with those of the rest of my group. Kind of like how Harry created an awesome piece of art in collaboration with another artist. I love the way Harry thinks, and I especially love his eco-friendly roller skate idea. To me, it's scary to think about how the future we've always been told about, where artificial intelligence can create art at the click of a button, is now our present. But I don't believe that AI could ever compare to an artist. The way Harry can spend months on a piece, how he represents his emotions with lines and colors and then paints over it and does it again. I can't wait to continue with this project and talking with a professional like Harry has made me even more excited.